In this video, I'm going to be going over how to install Gala nodes on your Windows machine and or how to update them. So go ahead and stay tuned as we jump in. So first off, this install is being done on a Windows 11 computer. If you have a Windows 10, it must be Windows 10 Pro or update to Windows 11. The Gala node will not work on Windows 10 Home anymore. If you uh, want to do a workaround instead, go ahead and click the link up top here. And that will take you to how to install Ubuntu on your uh, Windows 10 computer and how to uh, do it a, a Linux version of it, essentially. So let's go ahead and jump right in. First thing you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and open up a web page, do node.gala.com. It'll bring you to your login. Go ahead and do all your login stuff. Then you're going to come right here to download. Make sure you're on Windows. Right click this install the Gala node software v3 on Windows. It'll open up another page for you. This is the uh, written article from the team, which is good. Very first thing, please ensure Gala Node V2 software is not running and is uninstalled. So uninstall if it's a version two Gala Node. Also, if it's a version two Gala Node, you need to delete some extra files. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go to computers. So you're gonna go to your main drive. You're gonna go to users. You're gonna choose the main user that you are. And then you're going to go to app data. This is the hidden folder. If you don't see it, go to view, go to show, go down to hidden items, check that box, go into app data, go to local. Gala will show up. It'll say Gala node somewhere around here. It's already deleted off my computer. You're going to check into the box, delete what's inside, go back, then delete the box itself. Some computers are kind of weird. There'll be two Gala node uh, folders like that as well. Go into roaming, same thing, find where Gala node is, delete it out and you're good to go and it's now a gonna be a clean install. So, uh, it shows you the link right here. Before installing, the very first thing we need to do is CPU virtualization. So this is probably the most difficult aspect of installing this because you need to make sure that the CPU virtualization is enabled in your BIOS. So let's jump into that first. Some different ones. So. First one right here is an uh, old uh, MSI uh, Click BIOS. So your BIOS, when you restart your computer and starting to load up, it's either going to be F2 or the delete key. Uh, every motherboard's a little different, but if you want, I guess you could just go F2 delete, F2 delete, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, um, until you know you're just so crazy that you go. But it'll uh, should pop up. If it goes into Windows, you just got to restart and do it again. Uh, sometimes it'll tell you on that screen just for a brief second what to click. So once you're in your BIOS, uh, it'll look something like this. This is pretty old, but uh, for like the MSI Click BIOS, for instance, um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna go to overclocking. You're gonna go down to CPU features, and the specific thing you're looking for in all these BIOS is something that either says like this Intel Virtualization Tech, Intel VTD Tech, and you're gonna go ahead and wanna switch that from disabled to enabled. There's a few computers that have this automatically enabled, but most of the ones I've seen have been disabled. The other thing that's very, very common, which will go into the gigabyte here. So here's the gigabyte motherboard. Um, first, sometimes you'll go into the easy mode. If you are, you wanna go into the advanced mode. This is in pretty much any BIOS. So go ahead and go to advanced mode. In the advanced mode for the gigabyte motherboard here, uh, I went to the advanced CPU settings and that takes me right into here and boom, there it is, SVM mode and it was disabled. So I went ahead and switched that to enabled and then saved and exit. Here's another gigabyte board. Um, this one was a little different. This one was a little more annoying because you clicked advanced CPU settings and it takes you into here and there's no SVM there. So you're like, where is my SVM and my virtualization stuff? Go to settings, go to miscellaneous, and then here's your VT-D. And you go ahead and click that from enabled. Tried to show an ASUS one. The ASUS one was pretty straightforward. The SVM was right there uh, in the BIOS too, pretty easy to find. But those are the key words you're looking for. They need to be enabled. That is probably the biggest hangup that's uh, affecting most people. After you have slogged through that painful CPU virtualization, I know it's pretty uh, annoying. You're gonna go ahead and go to the next aspect, which is Docker. So you're gonna scroll down, you're gonna click this Docker link right here. 4.12.0 is what you're gonna be trying to install. A lot of people have had difficulty with newer versions of Docker. Right click it, open link in new tab. 
Go ahead and go here. It takes you right to it. How easy is that? You click Windows, it starts to download it. Look at how beautiful that is. I'll go ahead and say open when it is done. While we're here, quick note, if you have Windows 10 Home, uh, the node will not run. So you either have to upgrade to Windows 11 Home, which will work, or upgrade to Windows 10 Pro, which costs money. Hopefully your computer can upgrade to that. If neither of those work, you may be able to do a workaround. This is actually how I'm running my Gala node on my system right now through a Linux system. This is an Ubuntu, just a pop-up virtual machine. You can literally just download this from the Microsoft Windows Store. Okay, so you just go to the Microsoft Windows Store, download Ubuntu 20.04 and it'll bring you up to this. And if you want, you can go ahead and click the, the link that I have in the description uh, that takes you to how to run a Linux on your Windows computer. The reason I'm doing this is it's just much more stable. Uh, it doesn't go down as often as the Windows system, even though the Windows system has been doing pretty good lately. So now we're just gonna be waiting here a little bit longer for it to finish downloading. And so we have our Docker that just uh, downloaded, asked us if we wanted to install, we clicked yes. It went ahead and went through everything, add a shortcut, sure, it's gonna unpack files. I will say my other computer is running a more recent version of Docker and it is running it fine, but for some reason, some of the folks have been having issues on their windows. So this Docker uh, 4.12.0 is supposed to definitely work with our nodes uh, at this time, so that's why we're using this. Now it's going to say installation succeeded. We will go ahead and close it out. We can close this web page as we don't need it anymore. And we'll go ahead and start to scroll down. So we've already installed everything. Configuration should, should if it pops up, you check both those boxes. Unpacks everything. Get here. Should say close and restart. We didn't have that pop up quite yet. Let's see if it's hidden anywhere. No, I don't see it hidden anywhere. So next step is going to be your Linux kernel installation. So you go ahead and just click this, it takes you right to the link. You click that very first link there. It'll start to download. Once it's done, go ahead and just click this. It'll pop up. It went straight to finish. Why? Because I already have this installed. If you don't have it already installed, you'll have something that will actually let you go ahead and say, click yes, install, and then it'll get to this page. So that's a pretty quick download. Then you can go ahead and close this web page um, and then go back to our little support article here, which I accidentally closed there. So scroll down. Like I said, this is what it'll pop up. You click next, click finished. Once this pops up and we pull up Docker, <clears throat> it'll ask us if we want to do uh, private networks, public networks. Make sure you check both of those. They both need to be checked. Uh, so let's go ahead and see if we can pull up our Docker right now and see what it says when we pull it up. Sometimes you can get some different errors. This is where your first errors will be if you're going to have issues. So as this pops up, if you don't have that WSL Linux installed so this all good to go once you open up docker you will uh have an issue it'll like try to start up like this and then it'll just like close on you or it'll actually tell you something go ahead and skip the tutorial do not do the tutorial there's no need for it and so docker is up and running so we'll go ahead and just minimize that because we don't need it at the moment next thing we're going to do is download our actual gala node so go back to this page where the download button is click download it'll start to download down here You'll see that happening. I'm going to click it so it'll open as soon as it is finished. Here's our wizard. Next, accept, next, next, install. How easy is this? Uh, after this installs, the next very first thing we're going to do, click yes, is we're going to go to the API key over here. So launch Gala Node Desktop. Yeah, click finish. So now it wants an API key. Click API key generate api key i would just make a new one if you already have a node and stuff just click the little trash can boxes over here on the right get rid of whatever key it is generate a new api key because i've seen that be an issue for some people you can use the api key for all your nodes though okay so when you're doing this setup the new one you make you can use for all of them okay so new one windows whatever we want to call it we'll misspell it because it's funny and i'm going to be deleting it here in a little bit anyways then click the copy keyboard Go back to your Gala node, click enter now. Go ahead and right click and paste it in there. Click okay. It's gonna make a fun noise. API key has been added. You are so wonderful. So scroll down. What else do we need to do in this nice beautiful thing that the team has made? Go down to the bottom right, click the up arrow. Right here, Gala node, click it. 
biggest thing you're going to need is select workloads. People forget to do this. If you do not select these workloads, you will not be running a node. So make sure all these are checkboxed. The beautiful thing about this, though, is once you do this fresh new install, you will not have to re-download or anything like that again. You will be able to just go over here and there will be a update node button that'll appear that you'll be able to click uh, when there is new updates. And yes, of course, there's going to be new updates in the future, right? If you really want, you can rename your code. If you need to new, set a new API key. So if you're not doing a fresh install and you just downloaded the node software only and uh, basically reinstall it so it's the newest version, I would go ahead and generate a new API key because that has messed up some things. Set the API key. And as always, biggest thing is go ahead and restart your computer. So we'll do that now. Perfect. We have now restarted, which you definitely need to do before you start everything running. Okay. It's going to make it uh, much easier. Next thing, go to your start, click start up apps. This is going to make your quality of life so much better when you turn on your computer. Go ahead and scroll down, find the Galando desktop, make sure that's turned on and find Docker desktop and make sure that's turned on. When you restart your computer ever and it turns on, what that'll do is it will automatically start up your Docker desktop and your Gala node, which means you won't have to do anything. They'll both just turn on on their own, which is awesome. Sometimes when Docker desktop is starting and it's starting to connect to the node, it'll just give this little error reading. If it ever does give you an error window, you simply just need to change to a different window and come back and then it'll it'll be fixed when that happens. So we can see our workloads are all good to go. Node is starting, it's popping up. Once again, before this pops up, sometimes it'll say error. Just click like the settings button here. We like dark anyways. Then go back and it'll all be running. I don't know for sure if they both have to have be running. Sometimes when it like errors out, one of them won't be running and I'll click the play button. I don't really know. If your node does go down, the only way to fix it on Windows is to restart your computer. Shutting this down on the node and stuff doesn't really seem to work. So just restart your computer. As soon as it comes up, all this stuff will automatically restart and it should be good to go. Once this is all green, green, you should at some point see that it says node is running. This may take 15 to 20 minutes to show on your Gala node over here, but let's go over to the Gala node. This is where it will show up once it is running. Okay. It is not here right now. I promise. Okay. Uh, this Wookie PC Ubuntu is my Ubuntu one, which isn't actually running at the moment. It'll be read in a, in a few minutes, I'm sure, but it could take 15 minutes for your thing to show up here. Okay. Give it 15 to 20 minutes. Check back at the Gala node. Make sure this is all green. This is the ledger of truth. This is the only place that'll say what's running. Don't worry about the workload version here. Okay. The node version is what matters, 3.2.1. You can also see it under your Gala node tab over here when you click about 3.2.1. So we're running the latest version and it'll show up here and then you'll be good to go. If that was helpful for you and you want to leave me a crypto tip, my wallets are down below. Otherwise, I do appreciate all the likes and the subscribes. And as always, stay warm, Wookiees. Mm -hmm.